In this video, we're going to look at additional transactions, but for one company and follow them all the way through and track them in Excel. Let's go ahead and get started. You're going to need both the Excel file attached with this video and the Word document in your note packet where it has the transactions that we want to explore for this year. Here we're dealing with Aguiland Boat Corporations mostly because I love boats, so I made up a company uh, where I could get to talk about boats for a little bit. And we want to track each of these transactions in this Excel spreadsheet. So I'm just going to toggle back and forth between these two files. Hopefully you have the note packet printed or next to you on two screens so that you can work through that. In this first transaction, it says Aguiland Boats issued 200 new shares of common stock for a total of $5,000 on January 5th, year five. All the transactions we're dealing with here will be in year five for the company. I could have said 2025 here or whatever year we were in, uh, but I, here I'm just using year five as a generic year. We looked at this transaction in the shareholders equity video where we issued new stock and we divided it up between common stock and APIC. Here I didn't give you the par value versus the additional paid in capital, so we're going to put all of this in one account, a combined common stock and additional paid in capital account. So we want to put that transaction in your Excel file. Let's get a little bit more familiar with your Excel file. Your Excel file includes assets in blue there, liabilities in green, and owner's equity in green as well. Owner's equity is just one more term for shareholder's equity or stockholder's equity. They all mean the same thing, so don't let that confuse you. We also have over here revenues, expenses, gains, and losses, all here that flow up into net income. Our big arrow here reminds us that net income flows into retained earnings, which is part of owner's equity or shareholder's equity. Since these are balance sheet accounts here with assets, liabilities, and owner's equity, they start with beginning balances. Remember, net income does not start with beginning balances, so we're starting with zero in net income. So all that's consistent with what we've learned so far. Back at the beginning of your spreadsheet, we have all of our different asset accounts. Before I add anything to this spreadsheet, I want to point out that at the bottom, our assets are being totaled here, and we have a total assets of 2,004,838. That balances with our total liabilities plus equity of 2,004,838. So we have a good spreadsheet that we're starting out with because we do balance. Let's go ahead and enter this first transaction. Remember in this first transaction, we want to record the transaction for the new shares that we issued and the cash that we received in exchange for issuing those shares. Let's start with the cash. I find that oftentimes to be easiest. So we want to record the 5,000 we received in cash. We received this cash because we issued stock. So we want to go over to equity and add in 5,000 for stock we issued. I'm adding that under contributed capital. This is just another way of saying common stock, the par value, plus additional paid in capital. And we're just lumping that all into one account. On the balance sheet, we would oftentimes see that as two separate accounts. Let's look at our second transaction. This is a transaction we haven't actually looked at in any of our videos, so I want you to think about what we might do here. This transaction says, Aguilian Boats is renting a warehouse that they use to sell and repair boats for $7,000 a month. The owner of the warehouse requires Aguilian to pay 12 months of rent up front, which Aguilian paid on July 1st of year five of this current year. What we need to think about here is this is a cost. So we want to say, is this cost going to benefit us in the future and therefore should be recorded as an asset? Or is this cost going to only benefit us in the current period? Since we're paying 12 months of rent, this cost is definitely going to benefit us in the future. So what I'm going to record right now is what we call prepaid rent. It's an asset. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to record an asset for prepaid rent. We're going to record $7,000 times 12 months. I'm going to go ahead and record all 12 months right now. 
I'm going to record all 12 months because I need to also show the cash that I paid for that 12 months, which was 84,000. So I wanna subtract 84,000 from the cash balance for the cash I paid for this rent in advance. At the end of this year, when we get down to the very bottom of this spreadsheet, we're actually going to move some of that asset account, some of this prepaid rent, over to, think about it, where do assets go as we use them? Over to an expense. So it's going to move to rent expense as we actually use that building. So six months, July, August, September, October, all the way through December, are going to move to an expense because we will have used rent for those six months. Right now, just when we first pay for it, we're gonna go ahead and just put all of this into an asset account and gradually move it over to an expense account every month. All right, let's go on to our next transaction. In this transaction, it says Aggie Land provided repairs or services over the course of the year. We have a whole slew of different types of sales here for services. We don't record cost of goods sold on services because it's not a good, so we only record cost of goods sold on goods. So we only need to worry about the cash and revenue portion of these transactions. Let's go through them individually. This first one, cash immediately received for repair services provided this period. So the services were provided this period and the cash was received this period. So let's record the easy side of it, the cash. We received cash of $50,000. Let's just type that in. We also provided a good or service this period. So we also need to record revenue in the current period. Remember that revenue goes on the income statement. It goes into net income. So let's scroll all the way over to revenue under net income and let's add $50,000 to revenue, which is going to add $50,000 to net income. Let's look at our next transaction. Our next transaction is that we build customers for repair services provided this period. So our customers haven't paid us cash, but we have provided the good or service. So again, we're going to record $105,000 in revenue. We're not gonna record cash, but we do need to show that our customers owe us money. So we're gonna go all the way back over here to assets. And in accounts receivable, we're going to add 105000 as well. Our next transaction says cash received from customers for services originally sold on account. So we received this period $125,000 in cash, but we didn't sell those items this period necessarily. We may have. Some of that may have been sales from this period, but some of it may have been sales from last period. So for this line item, I'm not going to record any sales. I'm only going to record the cash received for items that are hanging out in accounts receivable. So I'm going to record the $125,000 in cash received as a positive, and I'm going to reduce accounts receivable by that same amount. So I want to decrease accounts receivable by $125,000. The last thing I want to do for this transaction three is I want to record cash received from customers in advance of providing services. So I'll do the easy part. I received cash of $25,000, but I haven't provided the good or service yet, so I can't record revenue. Think back to what I do need to record. Do you remember unearned revenue? Let's record that now of $25,000 because I haven't earned that revenue yet. I won't earn it until I actually provide the good or service to the customer. Let's go to our fourth transaction. Now we're actually going to sell goods, not just services. So we're going to need to record the revenue and the cost of goods sold for these transactions. So this first item says we build customers for boats sold on account this period. We've done this a few times now, so why don't you take a minute to record this first item, the build customers for boats sold. You can pause the video, and then when you resume, I'll walk you through the transaction. Welcome back. For this transaction, where we build customers for boats sold on account, we need to record $950,000 in accounts receivable. 
we also sold boats. So we need to record revenue of $950,000. We have another piece to this transaction though. It's recording the cost of the inventory sold. So the boats that we sold cost Aggieland, we purchased them or made them, but most likely purchased them from a boat manufacturer for $600,000. I want you to pause the video here and try to remember what we do to record the cost of those boats that we sold. Go ahead and pause. Welcome back. If you remember, we're going to need to take that $600,000 out of inventory. So we're going to subtract $600,000 from inventory because that was the cost of that inventory that we sold. That's no longer inventory that we own. We sold it to a customer. We're also going to go all the way over to the income statement and we're going to record cost of goods sold of $600,000. I don't need to type that in as a negative just because my formula over here is subtracting out that number to calculate net income. So I'm just gonna put it in as a positive $600,000. Let's record this last bullet point in item number four, and then we'll stop the video and record the rest of the transactions in another video. This last bullet point says, cash received from customers for boats originally sold on account. So here, we're going to need to record 700,000 for cash that we received. Since this was received from sales that were originally made on account, that balance is hanging out in accounts receivable and so we're going to reduce that accounts receivable by $700,000. We'll stop the video here and record the rest of these transactions in the next video.